Hi, I'm Katie Jarvis, and I'm an art teacher in Northern Virginia. Today, I'm going to share my top 10 time-saving tips. Have a space and a place for your current handouts and worksheets. Here I have two bins that I purchased from Michael's side by side, and I have them organized by rainbow color for grade levels. This helps me immensely when students are absent or when I'm switching back and forth between grade levels. You'll want to avoid the dreaded pile of materials. This is completely disorganized and is going to cause you extra stress. Consider creating checklists for yourself for things that you're always doing. I love to make a checklist for my morning and afternoon school routine, and then I continually update them. Now, this is something you could simply do on a piece of paper and laminate it and check things off as you go. Admittedly, I'm a very big list lover. As a child, I would write things like brush teeth on my list just to be able to cross it off and get that satisfaction. As an adult, I love to use Google Keep. Now, I got this from Michelle Emerson with Pocketful of Primary. I purchased this on her Teachers Pay Teachers store. And these are headers for Google Keep. So this is an awesome platform because it does sync across devices. So the checklist that I'm using and working on and checking things off in my classroom each morning when I get there, I can reference that at any time on my iPad or on my phone. That way I can add things and update things as to what needs to happen when I'm in my classroom gets me a chance if I don't do it before I leave for the day, you know, over the weekend or maybe even at night the night before, I can come up with, oh yeah, I need to take, you know, uh, things out of the kiln and move things around. I can record that. I see that on my checklist. And then those are the targeted things that I can go after the next morning. I forgot to add that Google Keep also syncs with your Apple Watch, which is great as a busy teacher when you're moving around your room and you want to check things off your to-do list. Just to be clear, this checklist is not my complete to-do list. It's more of my half to-do list. And it's written specifically for that day, but it also has in there those repeating tasks. So even if we're doing clay or we're switching things up and we're doing painting, or there's a change in our school schedule, I'm not losing sight of the things that need to always happen. My Google Slides are open. I've pulled out my grade books. I have things cleared off on the drawing rack so students can use that when they come in. It definitely has helped to make a difference for me to use my time more effectively when I'm in my classroom. You will save yourself so much time if you clearly teach your students your routines and your expectations. My principal likes to say this as you have to go slow to go fast. You don't want to find yourself later in the year yelling at students, sit the right way in your chair, and then stopping to realize you've never actually taught them how to sit in a chair. So even things as basic as that, I would break down for my students if you're finding that it is a trouble point in your classroom. So with sitting, I should demonstrate to students options that they have. They can sit on their chair like this with their feet on the ground. They can sit on the stools with their feet up like this. They're welcome to push their chair in and stand up and work on their artwork. And then I demonstrate for them, and I kind of a little bit funny with how I do it, um, what not to do. So it is very clear on what is expected. So I demonstrate the, what I call grandma, where you're rocking in your chair. I demonstrate the surfer when you are standing up on your chair. I demonstrate the bunny or the kindergartner where you're kind of hunched up here, uh, trying to balance on your chair and work and teach these as things not to do so that students know what that expectation is. They're not surprised when I'm correcting them that they're not sitting the right way. And it's a very quick language of, hey, you're not a grandma and they remember what is expected. Teach your students how to clean up after themselves. In my classroom right here, uh, by my first sink, I keep baby wipes. These are donations that we get from our families um, at our school and students can access these wipes to help clean tables, clean hands, clean elbows, whatever is needed this way that they are independent and it's taking less work off of me. I also near this area have brooms. So these are small little brooms that I got on Amazon that students can use to sweep and clean up. Not only does this help me that I'm not going, having to go around at the end of the day and pick up things off of the floor, but it helps out our custodian. Have materials easily accessible to students. 
teach them your procedures so they know how to use the materials and care for them. For example, with my glue sticks, if a student loses a lid, we keep extra lids right there so students don't have to have me help them to look around for the missing lid. For my erasers, I keep them in ice cube trays so I'm visually able to see at the end of class if they're all there. What I find is students will show a lot of care and support to make sure that these are returned. They even start calling out as we're cleaning up, hey guys, we're missing five erasers and all will look around to find them. I keep my scissors in an over the door shoe organizer so students and I can quickly visually tell if one is missing. As much as possible, set up stations in your room where students can be independent. So next to my wipes and cleaning supplies, I have this little container of band-aids where students can open this up and help themselves. This could be for a paper cut or an imaginary boo-boo. Either way, I don't have to stop what I'm doing to rummage through my desk to get a student a band-aid and I'm able to focus on other things. If I see in my schedule ahead of time that there are several classes back to back that are doing painting or clay or another messy project like printmaking, I will take the time to cover my tables and then use these for a few classes. And then I have my students remove the papers and throw them away, revealing a clean table underneath. This tip takes a little bit to set up, but it's definitely worth it for organization in the long run. Consider creating name tag labels for your students. On these labels, I include the student's seat number, their name, their homeroom teacher's name, as well as their grade level, and occasionally I also include our school name. This way, art is already labeled for display. I'm able to put it back in number order so I can pass it out quickly from week to week, and it's very clear for classroom teachers to return artwork to students. This also eliminates no name assignments and I'm able to tell who doesn't have their name on something because I still have their label. If I have students that are absent, I mark this down on my seating chart, but I also go into their name tag and write a letter A. I collect any materials or papers that we used for that day and I label it so that when the students return, I'm not looking around for these materials to get them going. They're just able to jump in and remember that they hadn't been here. When I grade them, I see that A and then I can take into account that they missed a section of the lesson. Start keeping a list of things that you're buying from Walmart and Target and the Dollar Tree for your classroom, especially items that you find yourself buying year after year. Could you add this to your supply order? Is this something that you could ask for parents to donate? This will save you time as you're not running errands to purchase these things throughout the school year. I personally use an Amazon wish list and I also remind students about things that I need throughout the year. So I keep a bin in the hallway and students can donate items here. So if we're using egg cartons for painting, they can bring those things and set them in the hallway. This way they're not interrupting my teaching or my planning to let me know that they brought me one empty yogurt always be thinking about your future self. You might just be trying to survive this crazy school year, but we have to do this again. So as you finish projects that you enjoy and will be doing again next year, be sure to pack things up and label them. This includes organizing leftover handouts and worksheets so you can find them easily next year when you need them. As a bonus tip, what I like to do is when I'm done using materials, I like to replace them. So for example, for my printmaking, I make these little sheets for students to line up their printmaking. Before I would pack that leftovers away, I would just go to the copy machine and copy enough so that I'm saving what I need for next year so when I go to pull out the printmaking bin, things are already ready to go. I do the same thing again with weaving looms and other supplies. I would copy these and fold these as my students finish this year so that I'm packing up enough looms or whatever material we are using for the next school year. It is magical. Hopefully you were able to find some helpful tips and tricks to help you manage the mess. Check out some of my other videos here and be sure to subscribe.